Stefaniska with good speed trying to get that bunt down for the leadoff base runner of the inning, just unable to do so. So that'll bring up TJ Magliazzo, the Irish shortstop, rounding out the lineup this afternoon. Moore into the windup in the first pitch to Magliazzo, taken high, one ball, no strikes. A disciplined bat is TJ, returning to start at shortstop. He's been there for quite some time now under Joe Droulis. Yeah, he has. Swings and fouls that one straight back. One ball, one strike count. Moore is a little more settled down here with his location in this inning. 1-1, one, one, Magliazzo wanted to go but holds up as that one's in the dirt. Breaking ball from Moore, almost got him to fish, it's 2-1. and one. Yeah, he, uh, he, was, he was hurt by errors in the first inning, but he did have the, the trouble with his location as you mentioned. Fastball missing just low to Magliazzo. A good count to him now, 3-1, and one, a hitter's count. The Irish shortstop, Moore, into his windup in the 3-1 on the way. Called strike at the knees. Magliazzo was getting ready to take first, but we'll have to retreat back to the box. It's three and two, a full count. Well, the last time that happened, Nick Palma took a 3-1 for a strike and then hit an RBI single. He won't get an RBI single here, but he won't get a walk. Payoff pitch misses high, and Magliazzo's aboard. Runner on first, one down. Second walk issued by Moore to this point. Yep. Top of the order now for Notre Dame as Antonio Friedman steps in. He reached on an error but back an inning ago. Very un -Moore like so far. A couple of, couple of walks. Magliazzo on first. A dual sport athlete as well for the Irish. The punter for the football team and Actually got some time to play quarterback. As well as A.J. Serace dealt with some injuries in his junior season. Moore steps off, a reset. Now he's back on the rubber. A long look into Dobkin to attack the Irish leadoff hitter in Friedman. The pitch. Fastball misses low and away. One ball, no strikes to Antonio Friedman. And just look, Moore's giving up, coming into the game. Giving up four walks and 14 innings. Just, you know, rounds out the two over a seven inning game. He's already at that in that one and one third inning right now. A long walk <laughs> off the mound for Moore. Now back on the rubber. One ball, no strikes the count to Friedman. The pitch in the dirt. Stopped by Dobkin, but it gets away. Magliazzo's on his way to second. He'll get in there easily. And there's a runner in scoring position now for the Irish. Just one away. All kinds of mistakes going on. Here comes Jimmy Mayer again. Second time today. Coach Mayer's made the visit out to the bump to have a word with Kellen Moore. And we mentioned during the home half of the first inning, there was some, or the top of the second inning, I should say, there was some action out in the bullpen for Lawrence. Jimmy is talking pretty loud. <laughs> I can't hear what he's saying, but he's chattering and he's obviously doesn't look happy. Not sticking with more. I mean, you almost have to. The guy's your ace. Yeah, absolutely. If there's a guy that's going to get you through this, it's it's probably Kellen Moore. If there's a guy that's capable of working through this, I should say. And right. It's definitely your number one pitcher. That being said, Jimmy Mayer doesn't look happy. This may be uh, he may be on a short leash all of a sudden too. I don't know. Two and zero oh the count. More from the stretch with Magliazzo in scoring position on second. Top of the order now, Friedman. Ahead two and zero. Oh. Pickoff move to check on second and Magliazzo back diving, but in plenty of time. Come on, Tom. Slight cloud coverage making its presence felt. Yeah, not too bad. 
just as I say that, the sun bursts through. <laughs> yes. yes, leave sleeping dogs lighter. <laughs> 2-0 takes some off that one and gets it across the plate. It's 2-1. and one. The off speed working for more. Moore takes a peek at second. He's set. It's coming home. The 2-1. Lifted right side, but that will slice towards the Notre Dame bullpen. Count is now even. Two balls and two strikes. One down and a runner in scoring position. I would love to get this out. He's been working behind to a lot of batters. Yep. First pitch strikes definitely tough to come by for Kellen Moore to this point. Would love a punch out here. Count it two and two. The pitch. Swing and a miss. A little oomph on that one. Ramped up the fastball that time and got Friedman to fan at it. First punch out or second punch out of the afternoon for Kellen Moore. There's two down and still a runner at second. And that'll bring up Justin Precop. Precop walked and scored a run his first time up. I think if you're Kellen Moore, I wouldn't worry too much about this guy on second. You just need to get this runner at the Get the batter and he'll be out of the inning. Moore's first pitch fastball misses away. Precop's ahead 1-0. Oh. Yeah, Precop came around to score after he walked on the crazy bunt play. Nate Jones dropped a bunt and chaos ensued not, sure, not too far after. Yeah. <laughs> off speed, off the plate. He's, he is having trouble controlling that off-speed stuff today so far. Fastball seems to be, at least in this inning, he's been getting the fastball over. A 2-0 count. Precop patiently waiting. More. Fastball up and away. Three balls. No strikes to the two-hole hitter and Justin Precop. Magliazzo gets his lead off second. And Deacon Moore trying to keep him, or Robert Kelly, excuse me, trying to keep him close at short. Moore gets the sign from Dobkin. Comes set. Kicks and deals. The 3-0. That fastball called strike on the inside corner. 3-1. and one. Yeah, Jones <clears throat> obviously taking all the way on that one. Stay back, stay back. The 3-1. Swung on and missed. Changing the speed and changing the eye level that time was Kellen Moore to Justin Precop, and just like that, the count is full. Yeah, all of a sudden, a little of the pressure now switches from Moore to Precop. Well, Moore still has some pressure, but... Moore battling his way back. Down 3-0, now to 3-2. Has his sign. He's ready. The pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. Dropped the hook in for the backwards K. Well, he, did get, he got that off-speed stuff over. That curve dropped right in. Well done by Moore to get out of uh, what could have been a, another tough inning. No runs, no hits, and a man left on base. Irish still out in front, three to, three to one, as we're through two. Kessel Dermatology offers great cosmetic dermatology featuring the latest technology in cosmetics, including Morpheus 8 for skin tightening and scars, ultraviolet A and B light treatment for psoriasis, eczema, and itching. Kessel Dermatology now offers Genesis and XLV laser treatments for wrinkles, facial discoloration, scars, and hair removal. Kessel Dermatology 
provides Botox and fillers. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Top of the order for the Cardinals. Chase Burrow back out for inning number three, and Robert Kelly stares at a breaking ball off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Burrow's working quickly, winds and fires, and skips that one in the dirt, 2-0. Oh. I just told Colin, you're lucky if I can remember your name. I meant to say, I'm lucky if I can remember <laughs> your name. <laughs> Burrow's 2-0 oh offering, in at the knees, 2-1 now to Kelly. Kelly singled his first time up, came around to score. The 2-1, waved at, maybe got a piece of that one as he fouled it off, actually. 2-2 two two now, Burrow's battling back. Into the windup in the 2-2 two -two pitch. Spoiled, fouled back towards the softball field. Yeah, it's nice there's no softball game going on today. <laughs> we don't have to yeah. worry about those balls flying over. Head on a swivel, typically, when... Both are in action. Yeah, well, that'll be happening tomorrow. <laughs> the 2-2 in the dirt, blocked by De Palma. Counts full. Three balls and two strikes to Robert Kelly. Burroughs shakes off De Palma, now has his sign. The payoff pitch. Fastball too high and a little bit out for ball four. Pretty good at bat by Kelly to battle back there. Kelly works the leadoff walk. He's aboard. Here's Deacon Moore. He singled his first time up as well. Yeah, after failing to get the bunt down, I don't know if they'll try bunting again now that they're down a run. Well, Moore lines this one into center field. This could be extra bases. Stefanisco has it. He's coming up firing to third. Cut off by Vizzoni. The throw to second base. Not in time. Avoiding this tag with the slide was Deacon Moore. Runners at second and third. The tying run is aboard. Well, good aggressive base running by Lawrence there. That not only got Kelly to third, but it got Moore up to second to take any possibility of a double play out of the equation. Two in scoring position for Lawrence. A base knock could tie us at three. Here's Teak Toto. Hit into a double play his first time up. Fastball in there, called strike one. A little extra life on the heater that time from Burroughs. More two for two now. That puts him up to 400 for the season. Toto fouls that one towards the football field. Quickly, no balls. Two strikes now to Toto. Burrow's looking for a punch out. He steps off and he'll reestablish. Ripped. On a line and down. This will score at least one. Stefanisco has it. He's coming up throwing. It's cut off by Duffy, it's an RBI single for Teak Toto. Back-to-back -back singles have the Cardinals in business, and it's a one-run game. Yeah, good decision to hold Moore third there. I mean, there's nobody out, so you can get him home with a fly ball, a ground ball, a ground ball. no sense risking it. So Deacon Moore's on third, Toto's on first, and here comes Kellen Moore, a chance to help his own cause. A one-run ball game. Nobody out with runners at the corners for Burroughs. Pickoff move to keep an eye on the base runner in Toto. He's back in plenty of time. Nice job of hitting there by Toto. Goes down 0-2 on the count. So finds a pitch he can handle. Here's another. Here's another line Burroughs. drive towards the right center field gap. We're all tied up at three. The RBI single from Kellen Moore has us starting from scratch. Tell you what, they, they're, they're teeing off on him right now. All these hits have been solid line drives. Two across in the inning and not done yet. Baseball fans, Thunder Baseball is back for the 2024 season on Tuesday, June 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Trenton Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com or call the box office at 609-394-3300. 609-394-3300. Postgame fireworks, Tuesday dollar dog nights, and pork roll Fridays throughout the season. Trenton Thunder Baseball, Big League Futures, Major League Fun. Visit on the mound has concluded. Good. 
Burroughs trying to work out of a bit of a jam. Tied up at three, two aboard for Lawrence. And taking over on first base, yet again, Josh Vakrosky. Legendary Nick the Greek, true Lawrence fan, former custodian in Lawrence on hand to watch this game, inspire everybody. Everybody out for this one. Nick is a character. 1-0 bunt, plays beautifully. Third base side, Burroughs has it, darts it to first in time. Successful bunt attempt put down there by Colin Williver as he sacrifices his at-bat to advance two more into scoring position. Yep, well done. After doing everything wrong the first two innings, Lawrence is doing everything right right now. And now, and, and now you got your number one RBI man coming up. Aiden Poot leads his team in RBIs with eight. Chance to tack on to his leading total in RBIs for Aiden Poot as Burroughs misses low and away. One ball, no strikes. One down, two in scoring position. Burroughs had him out in front that time. One ball and one strike to Aiden Poot. Bro, several times this inning has gotten ahead of the batters, but he hasn't been able to close the deal. Infield in on the grass, the pitch. Swung on and missed. Nasty off speed from Burroughs as he had Poot well out in front. Yeah, now's, now's the time to close the deal. A commanding 1 2 count in favor of Chase Burroughs looking for the punch out. Make him hit your pitch. The pitch swung on and missed. Poot. Throw to third base. Did they get him? They did. Wow. Heady play by Nick De Palma on the drop third strike. Poot reaches first and tug out at third was Teak Toto. Wow, how often, if ever, do you see that? Just like oh, that, wow. first and second with two down. I mean, I thought the way that was working out, I thought, oh, they're gonna screw this up. Poot's gonna get on there and have the bases loaded. And he snapped that ball down there. Great play. Slow roller past the mound, a charging Jones. The throw on the run in time to retire the side. <laughs> Burroughs strands a couple. The Irish tied up at three with Lawrence after two come across for the Cardinals in the top of the third. On to the home half. Here from Notre Dame High School with the score three to three. This is Angela Weiner for your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County student athletes the best of luck, and also urge parents to stay involved in your children's school activities. Extracurricular events are a great way to keep your sons and daughters focused, and it does not have to be athletics. They can be involved with the drama club, the school band, even the debate team. An involved student today has a brighter future tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, and I hope you enjoy today's game. Spring is here, and it's time to view the world through Jammer Doors and Windows, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees in 1920. Would you believe that, Fish? Today, Jammer Doors continues to swat home run sales service and installation of garage doors, openers and entry doors, patio doors, and storm doors. Jammer Doors features Rainer garage doors, steel or aluminum, and crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors does their own work and installation using no subcontractors, saving you money. Avoid the big box stores and save with Jammer Doors and Windows. Visit their showroom, 2850 Brunswick Pike, Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville, or in the Yardley Grist Mill at 10 North Main Street. Coming soon, their magnificent new showroom on Route 1, opposite the Lawrence Shopping Center. You didn't let me finish. You didn't let me answer. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, how about that? Yeah, since Babe Ruth <laughs> was playing for the Yankees in 1920. Jammer Doors and Windows, a mainstay in both the Yardley Grist Mill and in Mercer County in Lawrence. I wonder if Babe Ruth maybe hit a ball one time and that went so far it broke one of those windows <laughs> <laughs> or doors. Well, we're on to the home half of the third. Threes on the scoreboard for each team, all knotted up. Kellen Moore is still out there on the bump, and for the Irish, it'll be Nate Jones, Dom Vizzoni, and Jamie Duffy, three, four, and five, due up for Joe Drulis' Irish. Well, that was a little bizarre, a bit, bit of a bizarre inning, that last inning. <laughs> Notre Dame's over there, or Lawrence is hitting line drives right and left, and then suddenly 
it all came crumbling down. Off the hands of Jones, shallow ball towards right field, and that's going to drop in no man's land right between Rivera and Toto in shallow right field. That'll go down for a knock for Jones. Yep. He's on base for the second time today. So a leadoff knock for the Irish. Jones on first. This is Dom Vizzoni, who has just about as much pop in the bat as anybody in Mercer County. A couple of long balls for Dom a season ago. And this infield for Joe Drulis, I mean, a lot of mainstays, a lot of returning guys. You got Vizzoni at third, Magliazzo at short. Yeah. Jones at second. Team. You know what, though, Mike? I'll tell you what. You look around Mercer County, and there's a lot of teams. Yeah that have a lot of returnees back. I mean, these guys, Robbinsville, Hopewell, Allentown. Yeah, it's, a lot of experience. Yeah, there's a lot of experience. That MCT is going to be up for where he goes. Jones is on the move. The throw from Dobsky to second base, not in time. Dobkin, excuse me. Vizzoni takes that one for a ball. Second swipe of the game. Yeah, Nate, Nate Jones. Nate Jones, every time he's been on base, all two times, he's swiped a bag. All two times. Moore gets a new baseball and takes a slow stroll towards the rubber. That gives Nate three for the season. A one ball, no strike count to Dom Vizzoni. A runner in scoring position for the Irish. Moore, the 1-0. That one gets by Dobkin, and Jones will take third. Well, I'm just seeing things I... <laughs> You just don't see when these two teams play. That ball just, uh, there was, that wasn't a wild pitch. That was a pass ball. I mean, Yeah, it just it looked like it went glove. right through his glove, yeah. yeah. You know, I wonder if anything, and not saying this could be the case, but it's a hot day. They're wearing some black jerseys. Catchers wearing all black gear. Maybe the heat could be having some of a, an impact on some of the miscues for Lawrence to this point. Eh, I don't know, maybe. But, I mean, they, they wore these black jerseys sure. before. In a lot hotter weather than yeah, this. So, yeah, no, that, that's fair. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe you get to 6-0 and oh and you start feeling a little good about yourself. You know, I don't know. Moore going from the windup. He's got a 2-1 count. Here comes the pitch. Popped him up. Looks like it's going to stay in the field of play. It's right behind home plate. Dobkin coming over, calling him off the third baseman. That's Dan Drizga. That's a smart move by Drizga. I mean, it's always easier. The third baseman's coming in. The catcher's... Trying yeah. to get his whereabouts, turning around, looking for it. Right. Drizga had it all the way. Not an easy play whatsoever. That was a big-time fly ball, a major league fly ball, if you will. Yeah, that was up it there. It was very high in the sky and a good amount of those uh, great clouds up there now all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, there are, aren't there? Duffy lifts this one in the air right side. It'll slice foul down the right field line. No balls and one strike to Jamie Duffy. He flew out to left field his first time up. That's one of those balls where if it's if it's in play and foul, you're like, should I catch it and then the score a run? Or <laughs> it's true. It's decision time. Moore winds and fires. 0-1 rolled over left side. Jones will score the throw to first in time to retire Duffy, but the Irish retake the lead on the 6-3 ground out off the bat of Jamie Duffy. Hello, point guard. You doing the lacrosse? Oh, you're just here? Oh, the point guard dedicated to her work. Yes, yeah, always good. <laughs> always good seeing Brianne O'Neill here. <laughs> yes. Program director for WBCB and the Sports Network. You think she's uh, you think she's here to spy on us? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure we're behaving. <laughs> De Palma lets a fastball cross. A bit low, one ball and no strikes to Nikki. Moore's pitch. Offered at, fouled towards the softball field behind us. One ball, one strike count. I guess that's what you call manufacturing a run for Notre Dame. 100%. Single, stolen base, helped by a pass ball, and then a ground out. You know, you got a pop out, so that was a big first out, but the ground ball. Yeah. With Lawrence playing the infield back. De Palma stares at one low. It's two and one. More working quick. Rolled over left side and foul. Fastball. Counts even. Two balls, two strikes, two down. Here in the home half of the third. One across in the inning for the Irish. They got a one run lead. Moore. 
Moore gets the sign from Dobkin. Into the windup in the 2-2. Breaking ball called strike three on the inside corner. Freezes De Palma for the final out. Yeah, that would have been a tough pitch to hit even if he swung. Good pitch. Fourth punch out for Kellen Moore. Damage is done in the inning for the Irish. They take the lead as a run comes across on one hit and nobody left on base. Four to three to score. We're through three here from Notre Dame High School. The Italian People's Bakery, proud to support high school sports on WBCB. Make sure you visit them at their signature location, 63 Butler Street. For the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries, drive by to smell the homemade bread made daily or have them cater your next party or affair. The Italian People's Bakery is the place to go for the best hoagies on Sunday afternoon and the finest dessert trays for your special get-together. Visit them once again at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg. The Italian People's Bakery, since 1936. And always proud to sponsor our player of the game interview is the Italian People's Bakery. Stick around post game. And you can find the interview as well on our YouTube page following the conclusion of this one. And a good one on hand. Four to three the score. The Irish on top by one as after Lawrence gets two in the top half of the third, the Irish just respond with one to get themselves the lead and back on top. Chase Burrows out there on the hill to start inning number four and holding on to that one run lead. It looks like it'll be 8-9-1 due up for Lawrence. Dobkin, Drizga, and Kelly, the three due up. Whatever. In the top of the fourth, Burrows hurls a breaking ball, misses a bit low, one ball, no strikes. Dobkin first time up, a drop third strike. He swung out str swinging and De Palma fired the throw down to first base to retire him. It's a 1-1 count now as he stares at a fastball for the first strike. Burroughs kicks and deals. Curveball chopped left side. Blocked by Vizzoni. Bare hand across the diamond just in time to retire Drew Dobkin. Yeah, he did a good job of knocking it down and then kind of stumbled a little bit. Good job of recovering and... You know, and a, a pretty good job there, too, by Duffy to stretch and get that ball. You can see there Vizzoni, after he blocked that one, he waved away Magliazzo and Burrow saying, I still got it. Right. Picked it up with the bare hand and fired a laser over to Duffy for the first out. Yeah, and Dobkin, a catcher, not, not the greatest, fleetest of foot, as you would say. So they had they had time to get him. Burrow's ahead here on Don, or Dan Drizga. Now it's even, one ball and one strike. All kinds of action going on behind us here. People coming and going. <laughs> <laughs> Drizga, chopper towards Vizzoni. Gets it on the high hop. The throw across the diamond. Well in time. Two down. Back-to-back 5-3 -back putouts. Burroughs loves it. Two up, two down. And top of the order now. Here's Robert Kelly. It's five in a row now retired by Burroughs. That's the best stretch of either pitcher so far in this game. Here's the top of the order. Kelly lets that one bounce in the dirt. 1-0. Not that these pitchers have pitched terrible. I mean, if you're just joining us and you see 4-3, you're thinking, wow, these guys are hitting that. That's not really the case as much as there's been some shoddy fielding. Bouncing ball to third, just foul as Vizzoni misses his opportunity to record all three outs in the inning. Still a chance, though. Yes, still a chance a long-standing CVC record. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike to Robert Kelly. A single and a walk, two runs scored for the Cardinals in this one. Doing leadoff type things is Robert Kelly to this point. Burroughs 1-1 one, one offering in the dirt. Nice stop there by De Palma. Well, two and one. Now we have Bill Redner here. <laughs> Every, hey, Bill. Everybody's coming out. I Bill think, Redner. I, I think they're watching this, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Bouncing ball to short. Fielder on the high hop by Magliazzo. Throws it across in plenty of time to retire the side. Bunch of ground ball outs for Chase Burrows there in the top half of the fourth. Four to three the score. We'll head to the home half with the Irish Bats on the other side of this timeout.
Hi, Meryl Reese reminding you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365. At 609-882-6365, come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Three. Yeah. yeah don't forget you miss any of today's action you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the trentonian for your complete local and national news seven days a week it's the trentonian or online at trentonian.com the only newspaper serving bucks burlington and mercer county seven days a week it's the trentonian well, Kellen Moore out for his fourth inning of work yes he is and uh he's, he's only given up two hits right and and <laughs> you mentioned it to start but you know, the errors, those are the things that really come back to haunt you both as a pitcher and overall as a whole defensively. And that's where the Irish have been able to kind of make their bread and butter, if you will, and, and, and butter their bread the most is capitalizing off of the fielding mistakes and the throwing mistakes from the Cardinals that were occurring during the first couple innings. To this point, they've calmed down a bit. Four to three the score and... To get things going, it'll be 7, 8, and 9. Connor Dunn, Tyler Stefanisco, and TJ Magliazzo, the three do up in the home half of the fourth. Moore out there like a true ace, a true workhorse, battling through the control issues to start and still out there as he fires a fastball in at the knees, a called strike one to Dunn, 0-1 oh the count. Yeah, that's that's what a workhorse will do for you. You know, might not be his best stuff. Uh, he certainly doesn't have bad stuff. I'm not saying that, but he does have to. He's battling through. He's fighting some adversity, and you know, doing the best he can to keep his team in it. Right. And that's what you, you know, most times you're going to get a really, really well pitched game. Other times, there's always going to be these kind of days. But as long as you don't self destruct. You know, that shows that you have that good mental makeup. Oh, right off the helmet. And Moore elevates a fastball. That one hit off the helmet of Connor Dunn and seems to be okay for the time being. I'll tell you, it kind of sounded like it hit a piece of the bat as well on its way out as you heard a slight ding. But definitely got the helmet first and done a slow stroll down to the first base bag and taking his time getting there. Swirl here, even if you have protection, that'll. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 88 to 90 around the uh, the cranium. Yeah, that'll definitely uh, get the birds spinning around the proverbial birdhouse. Absolutely, <laughs> like on the cartoons. <laughs> Correct. That was that's what I was looking for. Yeah. I'm glad you got it. Oh yeah, I, I, I could say I, I saw Bugs Bunny and Tweety Pie all <laughs> all at once. <laughs> And they'll get Danny Katrupi into the game, the courtesy run for Connor Dunn. And Dunn's going to get looked at. I just heard Joe Drulis from here kind of say, we're going to have you looked at. Is that all right? And I don't really think he's got too much of a choice given the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the precaution taken at the high school level. We'll get him checked out. And for the time being, Danny Katrupi taking over in the designated hitting spot and on the base pass. We'll just say on the base pass for now. Right. Because we don't know if... Potentially, Dunn will be able to return. Well, we hope he'll be able to return. Stefanisco steps into the box and shows bunt, pulls back, takes a ball, 1-0. Popped up to the catcher, his first time up. A similar scenario, trying to get the bunt down and just popped it up to Dobkin behind home plate. More behind 1-0. Katrupi, sizable lead, able to uh, get more to step off the back of the rubber. Still a 1-0 count. Katrupi committed to St. Joe's. 
Stefanisco shows bunt, pulls back. It's a called strike. One and one the count. More comes set. Stefanisco gets a bunt down. Right side of the mound. More bobbles, throws in time to get Stefanisco. Runner in scoring position now. Katrupi goes to second. And a job well done by Stefanisco. Yeah, I mean, that, Notre Dame's doing a good job getting those bunts down. So that'll bring up TJ Magliazzo. One down. Katrupi in scoring position at second base. And more forced to work from the stretch still. Or almost had a little, little bit of a problem there picking that ball up. Seen that a couple of times today with both teams mm -hmm. on the bunt plays, just a little too frantic maybe getting to the ball. Magliazzo stares at an elevated fastball out of the zone, 1-0. and That is the second successful sacrifice laid down by the Irish. A long look in. Kellen Moore. Into Drew Dobkin. He's got his sign. Takes a peek at second at Katrupi, the pitch. Low and outside, 2-0 and now. Magliazzo walked back in the second. Was stranded on base. Nobody throwing down at Lawrence bullpen. Yeah, there was some early activity, and then after that uh, top of the second inning, it stopped. A 2-0 count, the pitch. Swung on and fouled straight back, 2-1. Never know, Jimmy Mayer. He may have just done that to get more fired up. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Two balls and one strike to Magliazzo. Moore's pitch finds the outer part of the plate. Two balls and two strikes now to the Irish shortstop in Magliazzo. Katrupi leads off second. Magliazzo swings and fouls it back towards the tennis courts. Yes. Count halted at two and two. How's that Irish tennis team doing this year? You know that I don't, I don't know too much about. I uh, believe some of my sources have changed at the helm for the, the tennis program. <laughs> okay. The pitch thrown behind him might have hit him, and I believe it did hit him as he'll stay put at first. Magliazzo at first, and now Catrupi on second. So. Second hit by pitch in the inning from Moore yeah. to these Irish hitters. He's given up two hits, one, two, two walks, and hits two batters. And he's coupled out with two errors and a pass ball. <laughs> There's been some adversity to work through this afternoon for Kellen Moore. Yeah. Runners at first and second, one down. Forcing any bag. Antonio Friedman stares at a fastball away. One ball, no strikes. We're calling Connor Dunn's parents to the dugout, so. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully he's okay. Concussion or something? I don't know. The 1 0. Friedman spits on that one in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Love to roll two here, but <laughs> you keep getting behind batters. Definitely makes it a little tougher. Yeah, absolutely. Runners get their leads off first and second. Moore takes a peek at Katrupi on the second base bag and misses low with the fastball. Three balls, no strikes to the Irish leadoff bat and Antonio Friedman. Wind continues to pick up. Masters. Did you, <laughs> did you see any of that? I oh, did. Boy. Tremendous. Flowing, flowing like crazy. 3-0 fastball. That one's at the belt for a called strike one. Scheffler was tremendous, that's for sure. 
He truly was. He was he was locked in, and all the distractions from outside of the course, you know, a child on the way, yeah. his wife in, in borderline labor, and Amazing. he's able to play his best golf. That just shows you the mental makeup Scotty Scheffler's got just a little bit. The 3-1. Friedman fouls it off himself and towards the Lawrence dugout. Now it's three and two. Hey, I wonder if they'll send the runners now to try and stay out of the double play. I mean, obviously you do that with one out, you risk a strikeout double play. Sure. But count is full. Three balls, two strikes. Magliazzo on first, Catrupi on second. Still one down. Home half of the fourth inning. Irish on top by a run. I'm willing to bet they go. A lot. Friedman awaits. Moore's pitch. The runners stay put. He misses high for ball four. Bases are loaded. One out for Justin Precop. Wrong again. Way to go, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's worked out for Notre Dame. Uh, bases loaded, one out. Bases loaded, one out, and tremendous speed on the base paths for the Irish. If Precop can find a gap, it might end up scoring or might end up clearing the bases depending on the jump that the runners get. Friedman on first, the leadoff batter, draws the walk to load the bases. Moore going from the windup with a runner on every base. First pitch to Precop, misses high with the fastball, and a great snare out of the air by Drew Dobkin to keep that one at bay. Yeah, Moore is, I think, could be fighting himself a little bit right now. And Jimmy Mayer's coming out to the mound to talk some things over with Moore. Third time today we've said that. Yep, I'm not surprised. He's got to settle him down here. Baseball fans, Trenton Thunder, Thunder Baseball ball. returns for the 2024 season on June 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com. Yeah, pitching change indeed. Kellen Moore's day is done. Three and a third for Kellen. Bases are loaded. His book is not closed for the day just yet. And looks like we got Aiden Crowley coming in. That we do. Aiden Crowley will take over on the bump. Pitching change on the mound and we'll take a quick break. Irish on top, four to three in the home half of the second, or home half of the fourth, excuse me, bases loaded with a runner on every bag and just one down for Notre Dame when we return. Kessel Dermatology offers great cosmetic dermatology featuring the latest technology in cosmetics, including Morpheus 8 for skin tightening and scars, ultraviolet A and B light treatment for psoriasis, eczema, and itching. Kessel Dermatology now offers Genesis and XLV laser treatments for wrinkles, facial discoloration, scars, and hair removal. Kessel Dermatology provides Botox and fillers. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. count to Justin Precop. Aiden Crowley's first pitch is spoiled towards the football field. A 1-1 count now to Precop. 0 for 1 on the afternoon as Justin struck out looking his last time up in the second. Walked and scored a run back in the first. This is Aiden Crowley's first appearance on the mound this year. And a big one at that. Bases loaded, one down. From the stretch goes Crowley, the pitch. Off the plate with the fastball, 2-1. 
Crowley coming in from first base, so he really didn't have any bullpen warm up. The pitch in the dirt and a nice stop by Dobkin to keep the runners at every base. So Moore goes over to first to take over for Aiden Crowley now on the bump. Runners get their leads, nobody being held on. Line drive towards short, caught by Moore. The throw to second is in time, and that will retire the side. That was actually Robert Kelly staring that one out of the air. It's a 6-4 double play on the line out. Well, that looked like trouble when it left the bat. It turned into kind of a little bit of a humpback line drive, but right at Kelly. And Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And, you know, he came in with a 3-1 pitch there that he had to get over. And Precop got good good, good uh, contact, but to no avail for Notre Dame. Big break for Lawrence. Yeah, the Cardinals flashed some leather to end the fourth inning. Irish strand three as we remain 4-3 to three the score through four here from Notre Dame. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honorfree, your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Great seeing you, Coach. Take care, man. A nice visit by uh, head coach Sean Clancy of the Notre Dame football team saying what's up before he heads on his merry way. Also coaches the track team, we just found out as well, and letting us know they won't be short of speed this season coming up on the gridiron. That's always good to get those little tidbits of insight as Chase Burrow is back out to start the fifth. He's ahead 0-1 against Deacon Moore. 2-3-4 and four due up for Lawrence. A high fly ball, shallow infield, now shallow outfield rather, as Magliazzo back pedals under it for the out. Well, the book is closed on Kellen Moore. Three and a third innings pitched, four runs, two of them earned, two hits, three walks, three strikeouts, and two hit batters. So it was really an un Kellen Moore like effort. But you know what? You're going to have that sometimes. And even with all the adversity he faced today, as Burrow. Works inside and out to Toto, it's 0-1. Still in a position for Lawrence to win this game, just trailing by a, a run, and right. like, best part of your lineup is up now. Like we said before, he kept them in the game. You know, we, uh, there were some mistakes made behind him, but he, he battled and then, you know, got that big double play by Crowley. Well, like Crowley got the big double play to get him off the hook there. That's what you call picking your teammates up. A rope pulled down the first baseline, down the right field line, and ruled foul. It's a 1-2 count. Burroughs kicks and deals. Misses up and away. Two balls, two strikes. And, yeah, Mike, as you mentioned when we were off the air, Lawrence was fortunate enough they were in double play depth, playing yep. double play depth, which had Kelly shaded over to the left. And that line drive right at him. There's a hit. And there's a line drive through the hole on the left side in for a base hit. Toto. Puts good wood on it. His second hit of the afternoon. He's aboard. One down and a base runner now for the Cardinals. Here's Kellen Moore. Yep, still in the game. One for two on the day for Kellen. Toto with pretty good speed on first base. He inches off. Duffy holding them on. The lefty Burrows comes set. Kicks and deals. Off speed, misses low, crosses around the shins for Moore, and more times than not, they'll call that one a ball. Considerable height for Kellen Moore, about six foot four, six foot five. Yeah, he's up there. Ooh. A healthy hack, and just getting a piece of it is Moore. One ball, one strike. Kind of out ahead on that one a little bit. It's 
It's one thing with Chase Burrows. He will change speeds. He'll change up. He'll throw a curveball. A number of pitches in his repertoire. The 1-1. One -one. Elevates the fastball and misses. 2-1. and one. one down and one aboard for Lawrence. Trailing by one. Double barrel action for them down in their bullpen. Burrows offering. Out in front is Moore as he goes back to the off speed. Two balls and two strikes. Burrows would love a ground ball right about now. Double play still intact. The middle infield shaded in double play range. I'll tell you what, if I'm Burrows, I'll go, I'll go with that bender again. 2-2, two -two, runner on the move. Throw to second base. They got him. De Palma, a laser. Down to Nate Jones, who applied the tag to get Toto for out number two. Yeah, oh, great throw by De Palma. That's two guys now. He's emptied the eight base pass from him. Throw that out, stealing, and he threw a guy out at third base who had to miss third strike. And uh, De Palma has proven his worth. More back in the box. A full count. Three balls, two strikes. Two down, the payoff. That breaking ball just missed. Not sure where as Burroughs started his walk to the dugout. Yeah, that was, that was close. And De Palma with a quick look into the Notre Dame dugout. And the umpire just gave Chase Burroughs a warning as he said that he said that one was right down the middle. What happens? What do you get? One warning if you're a player and then you get tossed? I guess so. I wish they had warnings when I was a player. Maybe <laughs> maybe the words I was saying when I was a player were past the warning side of things. <laughs> They're like, this guy's just too much. Just tee him up. Get him out of here. This, this Warren kid's the worst. Uh, I'd like to hear some of those things when we're <laughs> off the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, Burroughs now getting a little bit squeezed by the home plate umpire. It takes a long walk off the back of the mound. Behind one ball and no strikes. That fastball in there called strike one. One and one the count now to Connor Williver. The Notre Dame scoreboard operator. Yeah. Going to acknowledge it. Yeah. Hasn't put the ball up yet. Oh, there it is. Frozen rope to left. Backpedaling. It's over the head of Precop. Moore's going to be waved around third. Precop's throw comes in. Vizzoni on a cut. The throw unable to be handled. Burrows there on the backup. It's a tie game at four apiece on the RBI double from Connor Williver. And you knew that was going to be close, but Jimmy Mayer was waving him the whole time, almost casually waving him too, not like, you know, hurry up, bust it. He was just sort of waving him around third. And, you know, that goes back to what I've, I've said many times in the past at the high school level send the runner, make them have to make a play. And, you know, I, I think a good relay there could have gotten him, but it was thrown in the ground. You just got to you gotta send the runner, and when the defense proves it can make a play like that, then, then you don't send them. But, you know, we got a tie game. I'll tell you, what an impressive throw from the outfield from Justin Precop. There's no warning track out there, but he was just about right up on the fence from where it says, a little to the right of where it says 317 out there. Maybe took one crow hop and put a rope in the glove of Don Bazzoni at third base that gave them a chance to have that play at the plate there. And maybe a little bit higher of a throw from Bazzoni gets him, but they had more by a couple of steps when the ball was reaching home plate. So yeah. a chance to get that final out at home was still there for the Irish. Yeah, they went in the dirt and bounced past uh, Bazzoni, and you know, there wasn't much he could do about it. So Burroughs remains in the game after the mound conference and fires a first pitch strike to Aiden Poot. He's gotten him to strike out twice today as he chops this one back towards the hill. Burroughs, fields, throws across his body and able to haul it in is Jamie Duffy as he got brought into the base path for the final out. All knotted up yet again, four apiece on the scoreboard. We'll head to the home half of the fifth. The Irish Bats looking for a response. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Most people diagnosed with skin cancer are not even aware of their cancer. It's important to get a complete skin checkup. Kessel Dermatology offers a vast array of surgical procedures, including Mohs surgery, plus other non-surgical options. 
take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. The Italian People's Bakery, proud to support high school sports on WBCB. You can visit them at their signature location, 63 Butler Street, for the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries. Drive by to smell the homemade bread made daily, or have them cater your next party or affair at the Italian People's Bakery at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg since 1936. And spring is here, and it's time to view the world through jammer doors and windows. A family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees in 1920. Today, Jammer continues to swat home run sales, service, and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, and storm doors. Jammer doors and windows. Crafted for dependable, long-lasting service, you can visit them at Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville. 2850 Brunswick Pike, Business Route 1, or in the Yardley Grist Mill at 10 North Main Street in Yardley Borough. Jammer Doors and Windows, a proud sponsor of today's contest. So now Aiden Poot comes into the game as he takes over for Aiden Crowley. And Aiden, as we mentioned, coming off that perfect game against Princeton Day. And he only went five innings, so I'm sure he's got a few more bullets left in that arm. Notre Dame right now, you're saying, thank God that we threw that guy out stealing second or else they'd be trailing at this point. So, Deacon Moore goes from left field to center. Poot is now on the bump. And just trying to figure out who that is out there in left field. Pitch, six hits, one run unearned. That was against uh, Robbinsville in a memorable game. Two walks and 21 strikeouts. It's amazing. 21 strikeouts and two walks. 0, 0.00 ERA. Josh Vakrosky out there in left field now as Deacon Moore transferred over to center. Aiden Poots first pitch. A little bit outside, 1-0 the count to Nate Jones. Next one on the way. That one a called strike. One ball, one strike the count. Who's in left? Uh, Vikorsky. Oh, okay. For Vikorsky, excuse me. Josh Vikorsky. Okay, yeah, he was. One ball, one strike count. Poot. Working from the stretch. Kicks and deals. Driven. Towards center field. Moving over is Deacon Moore. Races over and makes the catch. There's a lot of room out in this outfield. A lot of room indeed. 357 to dead center field. 317 down the left field line. 312 down the right field line. And a whole lot of room in those gaps, as you mentioned, Fish. Yeah, it looks it looks deeper than that for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the gaps. Vizzoni. Stares at a breaking ball in the dirt. He's ahead one ball, no strikes. I mean, like you mentioned the other day, Robinson was 400 to dead center. Yep. This is 465 to be exact. That was insane. I've never seen a, a field like that. Them and Nottingham, two deepest center fields I've ever seen. As Vizzoni lets a fastball cross at the knees for a called strike one. One ball, one strike, one down. Home half of the fifth, tied up at four apiece. Poot kicks and deals, the 1-1. One, one. Driven in the air to left field and carrying, motioning back for Krosky, and he's there for the out. A couple of yeah, a couple of well-driven baseballs, but not a whole lot of movement needed from the Lawrence outfield. No, no, they had to play good. Not that they were right at him, but less than ten steps for yeah. both the outfielders to haul in. Combined. Yeah, to haul in those. So two up, two down. This is Jamie Duffy. Duffy, 0 for 2 with an RBI. He grounds out to short. His last time up, drives this one in the air towards right center field. Motioning over and camping under that one is Teak Toto. One. All the outfielders get one play. Yep. F8, F7, F9 in that order. One, two, three, down go the Irish in their half of the fifth. We'll head to the sixth. 
in a tie ball game at four piece. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Kessel Dermatology is the place for all general dermatology needs for acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, hives, warts, and other growths. They have a friendly and courteous staff and they can usually offer appointments within 24 hours for emergencies. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. All right, thanks, Billy. Josh Klenna from the bullpen to the bump. Thrust it into this tie ball game at four apiece. Klenna, an impressive campaign a season ago as a true freshman, was thrusted into the saver position, the closer position for the Irish. And Fish, I believe it was you and I that were here when the Irish faced Hamilton West and Klenna came in and got a two-inning save, I believe it was. Stranded runners on the base paths a number of times against West. It was a 3-2 to two victory for the Irish in that one. A Mac Mira display from Hamilton West in that game. Mira uh, went yeah, 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 five yeah. strong, had yes. an RBI double. Mira had a great, yeah, now that you say that, yes, I do remember that. Yep. Well, Clint has pitched one inning so far this year, one hit. That's all he's given up, one hit. Well, baseball fans, Trenton Thunder are back for the 2024 season. It kicks off on Tuesday, June 4th. You can catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com. So Klenna comes in. He'll face 7, 8, and 9 for the Cardinals. End of the windup in his first pitch. A fastball hummed in just a bit high above the belt, 1-0. Rivera at the dish. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Reached on an error back in the second. Clinton's 1 0 offering. Missing again. Looked like the same location. Two balls. No strikes. Chase Burrows, five innings pitch, four runs, three earned, seven hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Clinton kicks and deals. Misses again. Three balls and no strikes. And the misses don't look all that bad, but just a little bit higher than the zone we've seen today just above the belt. Yep. Having the battle back down, 3-0, Klenna into the windup and the pitch. That fastball finds the zone, it's 3-1. The 3-1 offering, called strike two on the outer half, and just like that, it's a full count. Yeah, nice job battling back here by Klenna. Rivera, obviously, they, they, like this is Rivera, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Obviously taken, trying to get on. And he hit him. 3-2, uh, plunked him with the fastball inside. Leadoff batter is aboard for Lawrence. Didn't hit him hard, just nipped him, but that's enough to get him on. So that'll bring up Drew Dobkin. Runner on first, and Burrows into the game now at first base, holding him on. The pitch. Fastball showing bunt was Dopkin, but it missed. 1-0. A lot of life on the fastball from Klenna. Yep. He's got a bunt, right? Yeah. Showing bunt, gets it down, left side. Vizzoni has it, throws across the diamond to Burrows in time, taking second base is Rivera, one down. Yeah. One run game, no, tie game. That's what you gotta do, get the runner over. Leading run in scoring position in Rivera. Dan Drizga steps into the box. 0 for two, a couple of ground outs to this point. Klenna the sophomore. 
Long look in. The pitch. Rolled over left side and foul. Well executed fastball that time from Klena. Low and inside and wrapping the barrel around that one was Drizga. Former Hamilton West coach Mike Masseri texting in to say don't don't advertise Jimmy Mayer's tweets. Parents may not appreciate the language that he uses on those tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Ball in the dirt. It gets away from De Palma. He's still trying to find it. And the leading run is 90 feet away with one down. Yeah, that's kind of been the story of this game. Uh, the stake here or there has, has been costly. and It's not costly yet, but it certainly does put a lot more pressure on Klenner right now. One ball, one strike. Infield obviously in. Every infielder on the grass for the Irish. The 1-1. Shows bunt, pulls back, and it's a ball in the dirt. I don't know if they'd want to squeeze here now or not. I mean, you never know. Jimmy Mayer, he might do anything, but... You know, if he, if 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 you don't squeeze, you still got a runner on third with two outs, and Robert Kelly, who's been having a pretty good year, you got him coming up to try to get the run home. But we'll see what happens. And they just they just had a conference there, like yeah. something might be up. But right. That might have just been to confuse Notre Dame and let Notre true. Dame think something might be up. A little bit of gamesmanship. Yeah. Potentially, Klena kicks and deals the two-one offered at the bunt came up empty. Well, Counts now even at two and two. That would have been a safety squeeze there because... Runner was not in yeah, motion before Rivera, the pitch. Rivera was just hanging tight. Two no. balls, two strikes to count. Klena, a long look in. He comes set. The pitch. Swing and a tip into the mitt. Hauled in by De Palma. That's a big out number two. Sure is. You get that guy over to third base with less than two outs. He got extra lifting to do, and he did it. Now, infield can drop back. Rivera is on third. Two down. Top of the order. This is Robert Kelly. One for two on the day with a walk and two runs scored. Stares at that off-speed pitch for a called strike one. Klena toes the rubber, still going from the stretch. Got his sign. The 0-1 on the way. Looked like a change up. Missed off the plate. One and one. Infield back at normal depth for the Irish. Outfield looking pretty deep as well. Looks like no doubles defense from them. Klen is 1-1. Painted on the black. One ball, two strikes the count. Klena in the driver's seat. Takes a long walk off the back of the mound. <laughs> you don't remember this guy. There was a guy back in the 70s, Al Roboski. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you know who he is? <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. I've seen the videos. Oh, he was great. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-2. Blocked by De Palma. A backhanded snare that keeps the leading run 90 feet away. How big was that? That was huge. That's one of those little non-box score plays that, that help win ball games. He had a mad Hungarian. He'd walk off the mound, <laughs> yeah. bang, bang his glove, twirl around, come back on the mound. It was great. Two balls, two strikes. Klena kicks and deals. Ooh. Fastball that just uh, missed off the inside part of the plate. Yeah, I got to guess it was inside. We're off to the side, so we can't tell where it's at. It was certainly, you know, level-wise, it was a strike. The count is full. 3-2. The payoff pitch. A high fly ball. Not too deep. Precop waves everybody off. He comes in. He uh -oh. dropped it. He couldn't handle it. Wow. The Cardinals take the lead. It's 5-4. Well, that's a shocker. That's just a shocker. I mean, I don't know if he just took his hand, his eye off it at the last minute. Did he hit the heel of the glove? I mean, when you see that, 
There's all kinds of reasons for why it could have happened, but boy, that was a bad time for it to happen. Two down, Moore is on, or Kelly is on first with Moore at the plate. Cardinals lead by one, pass ball, and into scoring position goes Kelly, thinking about potentially taking third. Well, you know. Wow. You, you know the old saying, you know, just get your bat on the ball and things can happen. That's what happened there. He got his bat on the ball and <laughs> looked like it was going to be an easy out, but it wasn't. Fastball misses off the plate. Two balls, no strikes to Deacon Moore. It's kind of the, been the backstory of this game, hasn't it? Or the story of this game. On the ground, right side of the infield. Burroughs dives. Klein is covering. Can't handle it. It gets by him. Kelly's going to score. It's a two-run Cardinals lead. Wow. Uh, and they, they, Kalana was there on time. I mean, they should have had the out. And Aaron throw. Kalana had to try to go low for it. Ball goes out. Two unearned runs now. Two have come across in the inning. 6 4, Lawrence on top. Kalana trying to get that final out. That is so tough to come by all of a sudden. Yeah. Chopper, Vizzoni. Drops to two knees, blocks it, fires over to Burroughs. Inning over, but damage is done for Lawrence. Two come across, six for the score, and we'll head to the home half of the sixth here from Notre Dame. Kessel Dermatology has a highly rated and award-winning dermatology team with over 130 years of collective clinical experience. They've been voted as the region's best dermatologist and doctor for 20 consecutive years. Over 1,500 five-star reviews from satisfied patients. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Poot still out there on the bump, now with a two-run cushion in the home half of the sixth inning. And for the Irish, six, seven, and eight do up. Nicky De Palma, Connor Dunn, his spot is up in the inning. We'll see if it's him or Catrupi and Tyler Stefanisco, the three do up for the Irish. Trailing six to four after the Cardinals, they don't get a hit in the inning, but they do get two runs across after a couple of errors made in the field. Yep. Leadoff hitter for Lawrence, Robert Kelly. He's got, he only has one hit. He's one for two, but he scored three times today. First pitch to De Palma taken for a called strike one. De Palma, an RBI single in the first. He struck out looking back in the third. Poot comes set. The 0 1 offering. Adam well out in front of the off speed. It's 0 and 2. Poot said after that perfect game, he was. Having trouble getting his curveball over. He's going mostly with his heater. The 0-2. Just off the plate. A lot of Lawrence fans thought that might have been strike three. Decent filing from the Cardinals faithful down the third base and left field line. Yeah, well, they didn't have far to drive. <laughs> the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Poot powers the fastball by him for out number one. Yeah, this kid handles himself with so much poise for a sophomore. I mean, I remember he came in. Wait, who, who we got coming up? For this is guys? Chase Burroughs stepping to the plate. Oh, Burroughs, okay. Burroughs batting from the left side. Oh, 
Fouls that one, left side. Yeah, I guess, okay, so they just took the DH out. Yep. And Burroughs is now in that spot. Yeah, I remember last year, Poop came in a state game with Robbinsville, and it was a tie game. 0-1, blows it by Burroughs. It's now no balls and two strikes. And he, he was you know, just a freshman. Had some good games and some bad games last year, but man, he was awesome. 1.2 innings, I think he retired all five batters he faced. Wow. Yeah, he, that was clutch. 0-2 offering to Burroughs is well high. Good waste pitch from Poot, one and two. One down, nobody aboard. Burroughs behind one and two the pitch. Rolls it over right side of the infield towards second. Charging and flipping over to first, Rivera. Over to Moore. Four, three put out, two away. So with two down, that'll bring up Tyler Stefanisco. 0 for 1 for Tyler. Popped up behind home plate and sacrificed Bunn his last time up in the fourth. Sure, Notre Dame would like to at least just get one run back this inning. You know, the difference between one run and two runs with one inning to go is massive. That it is. Stefanisco behind on Poot. No balls, one strike. Here comes the pitch. Fastball a little too high. One ball, one strike. Two down, Lee Lawrence infield playing back. Kelly back at shortstop. The pitch off the hands and coming our way. Kyle Franco going to make a play. No. Nope. Thought about it. Boo. Nah. <laughs> Kyle says he thought about it. That's more than I did. <laughs> One ball and two strikes to Stefanisco. Poot looking for the punch out the pitch. Curve ball got him out in front and just getting some iron on that one. A little bit of... Uh, what do you think? Is that aluminum still? Aluminum, Is yeah. it aluminum? I guess. Yeah, yeah you, you, you're so used to saying got some good wood on it. You can't say that at this level. It's true. <laughs> I still say it anyway, though. I don't, yeah, I'm sure people know what you're talking about. <laughs> one, two, fouled back. Just getting a piece of that one is Stefanisco. We'll do it again at one ball and two strikes. Stefanisco's trying to hang in there. Spoke with Tyler during the football season. He was one of our Italian People's Bakery player of the games in a multi-touchdown effort. A victory against Allentown. Roller to short. Charging Kelly. Throw on the run. A dart to Moore in time to retire the side. 6-3 the put out as the Irish retired in order in their half of the sixth inning. It's a 6-4 Lawrence lead as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honorfree, your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Don't forget, you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. For your local and daily news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week, it's the Trentonian. Klenna remains in the ball game for the Irish, trailing by two here in the top of the seventh inning. And Klenna will be tasked with facing Kellen Moore, Connor Williver, and Aiden Poot, four, five, and six in the Lawrence lineup. Klenna should remain in the game. He did nothing wrong. The only thing he did wrong was hit the leadoff batter. But he got a sacrifice, a strikeout, and what should have been an inning ending fly ball that was dropped, and then what should have been an inning ending ground ball that was thrown away. So... Klenna has done his job. Say it, point guard. 
I never sit. Point guard leaving. <laughs> now we're see if we can keep it together here. <laughs> First pitch to Kellen Moore, fouled back. No balls, one strike to Moore. Started the game on the bump, now over at first base. Walked and scored a run back in the fifth. One for two on the day. Glenna kicks and fires. Missing one and one. Glenna knows he's got to keep this game right here at two runs. Into his lineup and the one one. Up and away. De Palma gives the sign. Clena agrees. The pitch up and inside. Three balls and one strike. Clena does not want to let that leadoff runner get on again. He saw what happens when he did that last inning. Uh, even though it was through no fault of his own, it was still the leadoff guy came in. 3 1, swung on and fouled back towards the softball field, and now a full count. Somebody took it on somebody's car, took it. A game of chances oh. parking back there. Oh. <laughs> parking a lot of these places at the time for a year. Yeah. <laughs> Klena kicks and deals a 3-2. A high fly ball towards right field. Moving over Friedman. He's there. Good job by Klena to battle back 3-1. Get the out. Big out number one for Klena. Here's Williver stepping to the plate, Connor Williver. An RBI double in the fifth. A sack bunt in the third and grounded out to short back in the first. One down. Klena into his windup in the pitch. Low and outside, one ball, no strikes. Lawrence with six runs today, but only three RBIs. One run came home on a double play, and the other two came home on errors. Missing low again is Klena. Two balls, no strikes to Williver. You know, I have seven hits for the Cardinals in my book. Latuo rolled over left side, hit hard, fielded on a knee by Magliazzo, throw across the diamond, got him. Two down. You know what? Your book and my book say the same thing. That that always makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> Seven hits. There's so many times during basketball season where they do not, uh, and I'm always at. What'd you get here? What'd you see there? What'd basketball you is just you know, it's going so fast. It does. It does go very yeah. fast. Even honestly, now that the pace of football at the high school level has gone a lot faster as well. A lot of no huddle offenses uh, we've seen. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Two down. This is Aiden Poot. Klena tried to drop a curveball in, misses up and inside 1-0. Yeah, Deacon Moore and Teak Toto both with a couple of hits today. Toto, Kellen Moore, and Connor Williver with the RBIs. Poot fouls this one back towards us. 1-1. One one. I believe it was last year after that Hamilton West game, the 1-1 one -one pitch. Grounder to Vizzoni. Story will be continued on the other side yeah. as he fires that one over to Burroughs in plenty of time for the final out. 5-3, the put out. Vizzoni fields it cleanly. Last chance for the Irish as we head to the home half of the seventh inning in a 6-4 ball game. Kessel Dermatology offers top-of-the-line medical-grade skin care products manufactured in the USA. They're tested and developed by a team of board-certified dermatology experts, and they come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology.
Hi, Merrill Reese remind you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road. 9-1-2, and two, due up for the Irish. Last chance for Notre Dame here in the home half of the seventh inning, and Aiden Poot remains on the bump. And his third inning of relief work, looking to continue the trend as Fish just alluded to off the air. He's set down six in a row yep. out of the bullpen. Magliazzo steps in. First pitch fastball at the knees, a called strike one. And you look at it, his last outing was a five-inning perfect game, so now he's got two perfect innings. So in a way, he has pitched a full perfect game. There, there you go. Four, four days in between. <laughs> 0 1 heater swung on and fouled back by Magliazzo. Quickly, no balls, two strikes to the Irish shortstop. Poot continues to pound the strike zone. Would love to get the leadoff man retired. The 0 2. A little too short in the dirt. Poot missed all last April with some arm issues, some arm tenderness. He didn't really have to do it. He just had to basically rest it and do some exercises. 1-2 curveball just off the plate and a little bit low. Two balls and two strikes. Lawrence looking for their first win over Notre Dame since 2021. The 2-2. Two -two. Popped him up right side. That'll carry well fouling out of the field of play. Counts frozen. Two balls and two strikes. Magliazzo done a nice job today. He walked and hit by pitch. But they haven't been able to get him around to score. The 2-2. Spoils that one again and stays alive. Nice job by Magliazzo hanging in there. Wasted New. two straight 2-2 two -two pitches. A new baseball for Poot. A 2-2 count remains for Magliazzo. The pitch. Fastball just off the plate. Counts full, three and two. A good at bat by Magliazzo. It's just about to say. Playing the role of second leadoff man is Magliazzo. The full count, Poot ready, kicks and deals. Fouls it back, the battle continues. Great, great battle here is right. Magliozzo not going down. Not without a fight. He's down. <laughs> the 3 2 pitch. Called strike three on the outside quarter. Wow, what a battle that was. Poot freezes Magliozzo for the first out. Again, that's that Poot poise. Here's Antonio Friedman. Friedman, 0 for 2 with a walk. Seven in a row retired for Aiden Poot. First pitch. Strike at the knees. Friedman's reached twice today. Got on an error, scored a first inning run. Walked. Poot struck out swinging. I'm sorry, Mike. You can no worries. The 0-1 skipped in and a nice block behind the plate by Dobkin. One and one. Irish would love to get Friedman on the base pads, the leadoff hitter, and just really great wheels and a good chance to apply some pressure. Yeah, although I, I doubt he'd be running uh, down two. 
That's the, again, that's the difference between run, one run and two runs in the last inning. Uh, fastball for a called strike two. You know, they, but Notre Dame needs to get a guy on just to get that tying run up to the plate. One ball and two strikes. Aiden Poot out of the bullpen. He's retired seven in a row looking for number eight. Kicks and deals. Check swing. Did he go? He did not. <laughs> Ours people are ready to erupt, and they did erupt with a Oh! We've, we've got a pretty good angle of that one from our vantage point, and they, that comes about just as close as they come. Yeah, well, we've seen a few of them on both sides. <laughs> Poot not blowing them away here. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. He'll step off and resettle himself. But that was a pitch clock violation. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, no. Hasn't made its way to the high school yet, level yet. I wouldn't complain. Friedman awaits the 2 2 offering. Called strike three on the outside corner. Eight in a row set down by Poot. Well, whether you thought that was a strike or not, in a pitch that close in a game, in a situation like that, you got to protect. Anything close, you got to swing at because you can't leave it up to the umpire because that's the result sometimes. It's back to back times. The Irish have gone down looking with two strikes. And here is Justin Precop. Three strikeouts now for Poot. Precop with a, a walk, a strikeout looking, and lined into a double play. Looked like it was going to be an RBI when it left the bat, but right at Robert Kelly at shortstop. Cardinals one out away from their first win against the Irish since 2021. And Poot picking right up where he left off. Fastball at the knees, 0-1 to Precop. Two down, nobody aboard. The 0-1 popped up left side. That'll leave the field of play. And a commanding 0-2 count. Aiden Poot against Justin Precop. Poot is the pitcher of record, so if he can get this last out, he will move his record to 2-0. and The 0-2. Off the hand, spoiled again by Precop. And if he can get out of this without giving up a run, well, right now there's nothing to get out of, but <laughs> if he can get this last out without giving up a run, his ERA will remain 0.00. .00. Is that good? The 0-2. <laughs> Curveball, a little too high and a little outside. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Eight in a row retired for Aiden Poot. You could tell Jimmy Mayer wanted this game by bringing Poot in because he's usually his number, number two starter. 1-2, spoiled again by Precop. So you figure if he wants to start him, you know, later this week, I, you, he would have held him out. But I, I think I, this is a big one for Lawrence. I mean, if they can get this, like you said, they haven't beaten him since 2021. Uh, it's a big CVC game. It's Who knows, it could come down to Mercer County tournament seating. 1-2 left alone by Precop, an elevated fastball. Didn't get him to bite. Counts even, two balls and two strikes. Yeah, once again, Poot's going to have to battle it out with a guy. The 2-2. Two -two. Curveball just missed. A tough pitch to lay off. Now it's full. Three balls, two strikes, two down, nobody on. Precop trying to keep the Irish hopes alive. Poot looking to retire his ninth in a row. The payoff pitch off the hands, left side, and carrying out of the field of play. I lost that one in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Precop takes his time, a deep breath, and now steps into the box. Poot, a long look in. He's ready. The 3-2 pitch. 
Low and inside for ball four. What the at-bat right there from Justin Precop. Excellent at-bat. Yep. A double-digit pitch at-bat from Precop as he spoiled a number of fastballs. And now the tying run to the plate and Nate Jones. They have a couple of tough at-bats this inning. One went, one went for him, the other went against him. And uh, I don't know, Jimmy Mayer coming out. I don't know if they're going to talk about maybe how to pitch to Nate Jones here. Put it back. Put it back. So... That stops a streak of at least 23 straight that Aiden Poot had retired. And I say at least because he had five perfect innings the other day. He had two and two-thirds today. So that's 23. I don't know what he did prior to his perfect game. So if he had a couple at the end of that game, but still. So taking over for pre-comp on the base paths is Tom Swiatek. Swiatek on first. Nate Jones steps to the dish, representing the tying run. Jones reached on an error, singled, flied out, scored a couple of runs today. Poot takes a long look in. Swiatek leads off first. Jones lets a fastball cross at the belt for the first strike. 0-1. Just eclipsing 6 o'clock, 6.01 to be exact. The 0-1. Ripped towards the middle. Fielded. Flipped to second base in time. And that'll do it. For the first time since 2021, the Lawrence Cardinals knock off the Irish of Notre Dame by a final of 6-4. to four. Wow. And well, I mean... This game was, it was not the crispest of games. Uh, the two, the two go ahead, the, the, what was the winning run and the insurance run, both come in on errors. Uh, you know, Notre Dame scored a couple on errors, but it was a good battle. It was a really, you know, back and forth. The team scrapped it out. And really, it was left up to Aiden Poot to come in and restore order to this game. And he did. He's got now at least eight straight scoreless or hitless innings. At, at, at least 23 straight uh, retired, and this kid, Jimmy Mayer, has been raving about him for a year and a half now, and he's done nothing to diminish those comments. So, uh, you know, good win for Lawrence, for Notre Dame. Look, let's face it, Notre Dame's got to get some games. they got to get into a groove. they got to come in. If it doesn't rain this week, they will. Five games in six days, which is almost a little too much of a groove, but... Uh, you know, they got to play a little bit. I'm, I'm sure they were a little rusty in there. I'm not making excuses for them or anything like that. I mean, a drop fly ball, that should have been caught. But uh, uh, they need to play more, and, and that's all there is to it. Lawrence, 7-0. and Probably their best start since who knows when. I don't know if they were 7-0 and last year. They might have been. But, uh, anyhow, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Fish, a pleasure as always, and a, a great one this afternoon. It lived up to the hype, to say the least. 6-4, to four, the final score. The Irish fall to Lawrence for the first time since 2021. And for Jimmy Mayer and his Lawrence Cardinals, a perfect start. 7-0 and oh, to begin regular season play. The Italian People's Bakery Player of the Game interview is next here on WBCB. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Merrill Riggs. Kessel Dermatology has a highly rated and award-winning dermatology team with over 130 years of collective clinical experience. They've been voted as the region's best dermatologist and doctor for 20 consecutive years. Over 1,500 five-star reviews from satisfied patients. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology.
Merrill Rinks. Kessel Dermatology offers great cosmetic dermatology featuring the latest technology in cosmetics, including Morpheus 8 for skin tightening and scars, ultraviolet A and B light treatment for psoriasis, eczema, and itching. Kessel Dermatology now offers Genesis and XLV laser treatments for wrinkles, facial discoloration, scars, and hair removal. Kessel Dermatology provides Botox and fillers. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Most people diagnosed with skin cancer are not even aware of their cancer. It's important to get a complete skin checkup. Kessel Dermatology offers a vast array of surgical procedures, including Mohs surgery, plus other non-surgical options. Take care of your skin, schedule an appointment, with Kessel Dermatology. This is Angela Wannerfrey, your Mercer County Prosecutor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of our Mercer County student athletes the best of luck, and also urge parents to stay involved in your children's school activities. Extracurricular events are a great way to keep your sons and daughters focused, and it does not have to be athletics. They can be involved with the drama club, the school band, even the debate team. An involved student today has a brighter future tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, and I hope you enjoy Back here at Notre Dame High School after a 6-4 victory for the Cardinals of Lawrence High. They improved to 7-0 to start this season. Quite the start for the Lawrence Cardinals. And joining us now, the Italian People's Bakery player of the game, our man, Aiden Poot, coming in clutch and just really picking up where he left off in his last start, but this time tasked with the relief work. He had a five-inning complete game, his or perfect game his last time out. Comes into today just allowing one batter to reach base. Three innings of shutdown baseball, three Ks to go along with it. He earns the win and improves to 2-0 on the season, and his earned run average stays at a whopping 0.00. Aiden, first things first, man. What a game from you today. You had a great performance out there on the bump. You played a really big part in you guys getting the win. What was the message from Coach Mayer to you at once you get the ball on the bump? Um, I, I mean, I was lucky enough. That first inning I got out of it, but then we took that two-run lead, and after that the, the goal was just to throw strikes. And I feel like I did a great job at pounding the zone other than that one walk that he kept fouling pitches off. But, uh, yeah, the message from him was just to go out there, throw strikes, get ahead of the batters, and just do what I can. You guys beat Notre Dame for the first time today since 2021. Was there any kind of a pregame message from Coach Mayer or maybe just some talk amongst you guys about this one meaning maybe just a little bit more for you? Um, I feel like it did, especially after like an 8-0 blowout last year. But, um, I mean, this week is just going to be a big week for us. We play Allentown and Pennington after this. So this was a game we were going to – no, this was a week we were going to need to really step up our game, and I feel like we showed we could do it in this game. You mentioned a big week ahead for you guys. You got the defending Mercer County Tournament champions, some sights on your horizon that you guys definitely want to capture in, in this season and the success that you guys have had to start. A 7-0 start for you guys, though. It's got to feel pretty good. Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, especially at practice. Um, most of the practices now are chill, and there's not much going on. Um, I mean, our team, we need to work a little bit on our hitting, but other than that, I mean, 
Seven O Start's great. Yeah, Seven O Start is great indeed. Well, Aiden, you earn yourself a gift certificate to the Italian People's Bakery. You're a player of the game. Make sure you visit them at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg. Get yourself a free sandwich. Well deserved, my man. And thanks so much for taking the time with us. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Aiden Poot coming in. Three innings of relief work, three strikeouts, keeps the ERA at zero, and earns the win for Lawrence over Notre Dame for the first time since 2021. We'll take another time out here on WBCB. We'll thank our sponsors on the other side here from Notre Dame High School. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. One final time here from Notre Dame High School, the Cardinals of Lawrence take the win. Six to four, the final. Aiden Poot, our Italian People's Bakery player of the game. Three innings of scoreless relief work and two perfect innings or two complete innings from him with no hits, no runs allowed, just one base runner allowing on base. And as you heard Fish allude to in the broadcast earlier, a five inning perfect game with two perfect innings to follow it, he pretty much threw a full perfect game in the span already in this season. Aiden Poot, the Italian People's Bakery player of the game, the Cardinals of Lawrence, victorious 6-4 over Notre Dame as they improved to 7-0 and to start this season. I want to thank our sponsors who made today's broadcast possible, the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, the Haldeman Ford Subaru Group, Kessel Dermatology, the Revere Restaurant, Notre Dame High School, the New Jersey Education Association, Capital Health System, the Trentonian, the Trenton Thunder, the Italian People's Bakery, Jammer Doors and Windows, Hyundai of Trenton, all proud to bring you today's coverage of high school baseball on WBCB. For the crew, Darnell Turner did today's camera work. Colin Sommer produced today's stream. For my broadcast partner, the Mercer County Hall of Famer, Rich Fisher, my name is Mike Warren. One final time here from Notre Dame High School, Lawrence improves to 7-0 as they knock off the Irish 6-4. Until we talk to you again tomorrow afternoon for Steinert and Hamilton West, we thank you so much for tuning in to High School Baseball on WBCB. Have a great night, everybody.